Okay, gang, now we're gonna be talking about iontophoresis, and this deals with drugs, not this one. This is sodium chloride, which is salt water. Um, but they're always polarized drugs, and so ionto, think ion, so we're driving ions into the person's body using electricity. This is a TENS unit. We actually, in the lab, don't have an iontophoreser. So we're gonna pretend that this is an iontophoreser, which is an electrical unit. And really, uh, those are some of the most simple. They're very similar to TENS in that there's a time adjustment on it, and there's an intensity adjustment on it, and that's it, I'm like a power button. <laughs> and that, that's all that's on it. So for the purposes of this class, we're just going to use the TENS unit as our an example. So what you're gonna do is you're going to get an appropriately sized pad and it's gonna have two things in it. It's going to have a ground and it's going to have your active treatment pad, which is going to always have some kind of like clothish type of pad on it. And that is what the drug is going to go into. So what you're going to do is you would clean the area. So we're gonna pretend that she has plantar fasciitis. So you would take alcohol and clean this area because you need it to be nice and clean. And then you're going to take your needle and you are going to pull out two cc's of liquid, okay? And again, so the one thing that you need to know about this particular treatment is the only way that you can do this is if you have a physician's prescription for this because the things that we use are dexamethasone and lidocaine and hydrocortisone and all that kind of stuff. And so you can't just like walk over to CVS and buy this stuff. You actually have to have a prescription. And you can also only do so many of these treatments in a specific period of time. And we'll go over that later. But so for this, you would pull out your two cc's and that's max. Some doctors would say only use one or one and a half or something. And since actually this is just us practicing, I'm just gonna put one in here because it's not like it's really gonna go into her anyway. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna take this and then you just soak the pad. And if you can't get enough, like if you didn't get enough of the um, medication to soak the pad, then you need to get more medication. But the pad should be correctly sized to the treatment area. Um, in this particular class, we only have one size pad, so it's one size pad fits all. But in reality, the smaller the area, the smaller the pad should be. These are medium sized pads. Important, you need to have a sharps container and your stuff needs to go in the sharps container. You do not recap a needle. That's $250,000 for every recap needle that they find in one of these dudes. So make sure that you put them in your sharps container and do nothing else with it. When you're going to do an iontophoreser or an iontophoresis treatment, you want the active pad or the medicated pad to go directly over the place of pain and inflammation. So plantar fasciitis typically right here on your heel is where they're gonna complain of the greatest amount of pain. So what you are going to do is take this pad and put it right over that place. And I'm trying to make sure that I have room for both of these, because this pad is really awkward for this part of her body, because it's too big. Normally, I would use a smaller pad, um, particularly for a female, we might have a male that this works really well on, but for female feet or children's feet, you definitely need to have a smaller one. Now, the other thing that you need to keep in mind is you are trying to pull drug through their body part. If I put the active pad here, if it's plantar fasciitis, it starts here and then it runs through the bottom of her foot. I want the drug to go through her plantar fasciitis to get pulled through that. So I want to put the ground pad further down on her foot so the drug goes through her foot. If we were going to be doing, say, her patellar tendon, I would put the active pad here, so go like this and then I would put the ground pad up top because I want the medicine to be pulled through her entire infra and supra patellar tendon. Um, so you need to think about where the location is. If I put the active pad here, pardon me, and then put the ground pad over here on her calf, I'm not actually, I'm pulling the medicine through like her anterior lateral compartment and none of that's messed up. So that doesn't even make sense to do that. 
So you need to think about what are the tissues that are messed up and what is going to be the most effective way to draw that tissue. The other thing that you need to keep in mind is all drugs have polarity. They're either positive or negative, and you need to know that before you apply it to your patient. So let's say we're using dexamethasone to help with inflammation. You also need to know why you're using the drugs. Dexamethasone is for inflammation, so is hydrocortisone. Dexamethasone is a negative drug. Hydrocortisone is a positive drug. So the way that you would hook the patient up would be different. So again, we're just gonna pretend like this is our iontophoreser. We're gonna hook it up to the first channel and then we can just pretend or tape or whatever. So the way that it works is you want, because dexamethasone is a negative drug, you want to put the negative lead over where that drug is. So it would get hooked up to the drug and then the positive lead would get up here on the ground. And people are like, Frazier, that's backwards. But if you think about it, if you have two magnets and you put a positive and a negative magnet together, what happens? They attract. They attract, they go together. If you put a negative with a negative, what happens? They go away from, they go away from one another. So if this is a negative drug and I put a positive lead over it, what would happen? They attract, meaning that the drug is going to stay in the pad and it's gonna to try to get pulled into this electrode. That's the exact opposite of what we want to have happen. We want the drug to be driven away from this. So we need the negative lead to repel the negative drug into her foot and then the positive lead up here to attract the drug so it pulls it through the plantar fascia so that way it doesn't just sit in the pad. Otherwise, she's just sitting here for 10 to 20 minutes for no good reason because if we put it on positive, negative, the drug never left this active pad and she's getting nothing out of it and it won't be helping her at all. So just remember, whatever polarity the drug is, that same lead goes over the top of it and then the opposite lead goes onto the ground. Then what you need to know is what you want your dosage to be. Uh, we'll just pick 80 milliamps. So then you have two things that you can adjust. You can adjust the intensity and you can adjust the time because those are the two things that I said are on a Fariser, right? So your intensity is not going to be able to go very high. Very few people can handle even a five milliamp. Um, I've seen people maybe get up to six but you're sending a lot of really direct current in and, and you're burning basically the drug into the people's skin so that way they can get benefit from it. So saying like you're gonna do 10 milliamps, very few people could ever tolerate that and they'll probably get burn marks from it. So say we wanted to do 80 milliamps. So we'll say we're going to do, um, that would be like our full treatment so what we would do is do four milliamps for our intensity which 80 divided by four is 20 so our time then would be 20 minutes so it's pretty easy math if if we only wanted to go for say 50 minutes and she could tolerate five then maybe we could do 10 minute treatment um, but you need to figure that out and you also need to keep asking your patient how they feel because as you turn it up you might have been like, oh, for sure, we're gonna do a 20 minute treatment. As you're turning up, maybe at three or three and a half, she's like, whoa, you can't go any higher because it's hurting. So now you're gonna have to readjust your time to still reach that 80 milliamps. So you're gonna have to kind of figure out, and sometimes it's you have to figure it out on the fly because your patient that day is more sensitive. Um, this is not a treatment that you do daily, not daily. Um, Maybe you do it a couple times a week, but also people have restrictions. And um, last I knew, you could only do like six treatments uh, in like six months. Maybe at most, I've seen some places where they let you do nine to 12, it kind of depends upon state laws. So again, this isn't like an everyday thing. The benefit to this over like ibuprofen or Motrin or something is the drug is actually going right into the body part instead of her swallowing it and then it going everywhere. So we see much more direct effects. 
but after you do this treatment, as you take the pads off, you really need to inspect the skin because what can happen again is we're taking electricity and driving it very directly in with the medication and sometimes you'll see like small burn marks and redness and everything so you need to make note of that afterwards and then ask the patient to really pay attention to that and during their treatment it's good for you to stay there or to keep checking up on them because it can be where over time I've seen patients where it starts even though you haven't changed the intensity it starts feeling more and more and so you have to start turning the intensity down because Pardon me, they start getting like hypersensitive to it and that's when they're getting burned as well, okay?